Our next speaker has been a LARPer and LARP designer for literally decades. They've been active in the Nordic LARP community since 2015. And their next project is Triumph, a Hunger Games-inspired LARP running in Zagreb in late November. Uh, they say their subsequent project will be a very long nap. Uh, uh, I haven't been told to say this, but there might be um, some last-minute spots for Triumph, so you might want to check that out on Triumph LARP. Uh, if you Google Triumph LARP, it should come up. All right. So, as LARPers, we have intimate control over the stories we choose to tell. Uh, in this LARP, uh, we are discussing what responsibility we bear for the stories we end up telling. Please welcome Chris Bergstress. Okay, my name is Chris Bergstresser, and in a moment I'm going to raise a question. But before I do, I want to state a few things. First, I'm not claiming to have the answer. I don't think there is an answer, at least not an easy one. And the answers I find most plausible vary depending on where or when I ask the question. Second, I'm not saying anyone has done anything wrong. I think everyone in this community has been working in good faith with good intentions. But there are dangers to focusing solely on what's in front of us to the exclusion of the whole. The stories we create collaboratively are never fully in the control of any of us. The question I want to ask is, is there such a thing as an immoral story? By an immoral story, I mean a story which, for whatever reason, shouldn't be told. It's easy to think of novels like the Turner Diaries of the Camp of the Saints. If you're blessedly unfamiliar with either, they are deliberately reactionary books filled with racial stereotypes which demonize immigrants and minorities. Both are part of the canon of literature popular with right-wing militias and white nationalist groups. Are these immoral stories? I'm not asking if they're dangerous or if they should be censored. Amazon delisted the Turner Diaries in 2020. But if it's wrong to tell these stories in the first place, would designing a LARP based on either of these books be a morally neutral act? Would playing one as a LARP be the same? The answer to these questions likely depends, in part, on your sympathy for the arguments they put forth. I feel comfortable assuming in this audience there's limited support for the ideas contained in these books. But most of the messages we consume are at least a little more subtle. Top Gun Maverick was released last May. It is almost universally acclaimed as an incredible action movie with a 97% positive rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It also features the United States of America unilaterally and illegally attacking a thinly veiled stand-in for Iran over violations of a nuclear treaty. The movie doesn't sweat these details, of course. In the real world, it's the United States which broke the treaty, not Iran. Strikes within the region would almost certainly provoke retributive attacks Making, risking a broader conflict. But Top Gun Maverick presents a world in which the enemies of the United States manage to be existential threats, yet are weak enough to be countered by one targeted strike with neither collateral damage nor blowback. It is, simply put, propaganda for the military-industrial complex. Lockheed Martin collaborated with the filmmakers and are using the movie to promote the latest generation of their fighter jets. The Navy famously set up recruitment booths outside movie theaters showing the first Top Gun. They did the same thing with the sequel. Of course, you and I are far too sophisticated to fall prey to this kind of manipulation. <laughs> Top Gun for us can simply be a mindless popcorn movie. We can flatter ourselves by imagining we are immune to its enticements. But it's hard to ignore the companies spending millions betting we're wrong. Does that make the latest Top Gun immoral? I'm not sure. I do think the world does not need another story about American exceptionalism, another story which celebrates military intervention and the ability to solve political disputes through violence. We live in a world with millions of interesting stories, stories which need to be told. Why do we tell the ones we do? In my time as a LARPer, I've been a serial killer, a Nazi guard at a POW camp, an unrepentant adulterer, multiple vampires, a feckless Greek god, a cold-blooded military commander, 
a drug-addled mystic suffering from a psychotic break, and any number of amoral capitalists, from CEOs to middle managers. I hope it's obvious I don't object to playing morally gray, even evil characters. And to be clear, I count most of the vampires among the former, and most of the capitalists among the latter. <laughs> I was comfortable playing these characters because at no time did I imagine my co-creators, the organizers and the other players, thought those characters were right. They were all deeply flawed. They did horrible things, all the while imagining they were justified. And while I may have known them better after playing them, gained insight into their motivations, and even sympathized with their limitations, at no time did that bleed over into excusing their choices. You can understand someone without defending their actions. But then, in 2019, I played another LARP. My character was a scientist. Humanity was attacked by an implacable and relentless race who intended to destroy us, and I helped humanity build a weapon which would wipe out the threat for once and for all, even after discovering I was secretly one of the enemy. And in the big hero moment, the bomb went off and killed every single member of that race. My character died listening to everyone around them cheering my death. The term for killing all the members of a particular race is, of course, genocide. But in the days and weeks after the game, as I talked with some of the other players, I was shocked and surprised to find many of them had played a different story. They didn't see it as a parable for the way cycles of violence perpetuate themselves, the insidious way we become the monsters we fight against. For them, this was an uncomplicated victory, humani humanity triumphing over those who would destroy it. And in the death of millions of the enemy, it barely registered as an afterthought. My death may have been regrettable, but it was well within acceptable losses. After all, I was one of the enemy. I had it coming. In the years since that game, I've talked with more of the players, and I've heard a number of explanations over why it was okay to set off that bomb, why, in the context of the game, the complete extermination of a race of beings was justified, even something to celebrate. The bulk of their arguments boil down in some way to, we had no choice. And it's true, in the game we played, the alternatives were cut off one by one. Negotiations were useless. Coexistence, impossible. The enemy was irrational, not even really people, and so blinded by their hatred for us that killing them was the only option we had left. But that's only true because that's the story we chose to tell. In the real world, right-wing provocateurs are telling the same story about real-world groups. They're mindless, barely even human. They want us dead, and they will destroy us given the chance. These are the stories told in the Russian media about Ukrainians, the story circulated on reactionary social networks about immigrants. Just last month, Viktor Orbán endorsed the Camp of the Saints, saying Europe must not become people of mixed race. I don't think we wanted to tell that story. I think we intended to create something which felt like Top Gun. But that's the power of these narratives. They pull in all that baggage, all the hidden assumptions and implications. Was that story immoral? I know it makes me uncomfortable to have been a part of it. And it's not that I object to what happened. Art should delve into dangerous and uncomfortable subjects. But you can't tell the story of the brave, triumphant sacrifice of our heroic soldiers without also telling the story of the genocide which ensued. They're the same story. You have to recognize both. There are millions of stories worth telling in the world. The ones we choose matter. History is bursting with the stories of the winners, the bold conquerors defeating the barbaric hordes. If we choose to tell those stories, we must recognize they're inexorably tied to the stories of the defeated, the counter-narratives which pick apart the lies and omissions of the victors. It is critical at the end of a LARP to step back. We must abandon the limited perspective of our characters. Our responsibility as moral actors in an unjust world requires us to acknowledge the stories we chose not to tell, the perspectives to which we, as characters within the narrative, remained blind. Stories are powerful and seductive. They give us the tools to organize the world, to transmute the chaos into a kind of order. But we fall in love with our stories. 
For that reason, we must choose them carefully. We are accountable for setting them loose in the world. And I think most days, that's the answer I settle upon. The stories are not <coughs> in and of themselves immoral, but the ways in which we enact and embody them can be. LARPs are unique in that they are so intensely collaborative. They are built collectively. They can tell many stories at once, both grand and modest, comic and tragic, petty and profound. We all share responsibility for the stories we tell within them. Let's make them good ones.